YouTube, welcome to White Eagles TV. I'm your host, as always. Uh, big news overnight with uh, Nemanja Vidic throwing his hand up for presidency of Football Savez Serbia. Uh, he's uh, someone that's complained about the way the Savez has been run for a few years now. Obviously, it's, it's been building to this where he was always going to throw his hat into the ring and announce his candidacy for the Savez. And here we are. Uh, so... Uh, I, I just jumped on Serbia footy last night just for a reaction. There's not too many stories I could find, uh, but it says here he wasn't allowed to run last year due to regulations, uh, but it looks like UEFA has gotten involved and he will be allowed to run. Uh, and then I'm sure the old guy will do everything to prevent someone that wants to make actual changes from getting elected. But the F football side of Serbia is under microscope after the farce of the election in October. So we'll see what happens. So obviously... UEFA has seen what's happened in October and has gotten involved. You know, if no one puts their hands up to be president, uh, to be president and Vidic saying, I want to do it, but he's not being allowed to, well, then, you know, how is that run? How is that fair to run? Uh, so obviously, uh, UEFA has gotten involved and Vidic has put his hand up and good luck to him. If he wants to make changes and improve serve football, I'm all for it. Uh, as a big fan, um, absolutely, I hope he wins based on that, if he wants to actually make changes. Uh, you know, there's a lot, been a lot of uh, foreign players who, when they leave Serbia, they say that the, the way it's, the, the conditions in the country for football are absolutely terrible. Um, uh, and he, he was someone that played at Zvezda too. It was this Italian guy, I can't remember his name now. So if, if, if Zvezda's got terrible facilities and Partizan has terrible, terrible facilities and they're the two biggest teams in, in the country, can you only imagine how bad the rest of the, the clubs are. Uh, so, you know, obviously we need investment in, in sport, uh, in stadium, new stadiums, in gyms, in, you know, pools and, and sports science. And, and that's something I think that Serbia's national team needs a lot of assist, uh, help with, is their sports science. Uh, obviously we, we can't run for 90 minutes. We can only run for maybe 60, 65 minutes and then the wheels fall off. As you could see against Cameroon, leading 3-1 and then it's 3 all Against Switzerland, you're leading 2-1 and they scored just before half time, just uh, score into the second half just then, and then uh, you know you go home bottom of the group. So obviously there needs a lot of investment, and there needs some you know a bit of guidance and a plan, you know to what what's going to happen. So obviously if, if your president is only focusing on Partizan and Zvezda, well, that can only take you so much. So if if you know obviously Vidic is a Zvezda uh, legend. But obviously, uh, I'm hoping that he, he does more than just help, you know, Zvezda, Partizan, the old guard, that he builds up the whole country. Uh, but with Vidic, um, he started playing for Yugoslavia in 2002. And this is actually the jersey he wore on his debut. He played his debut against Italy uh, for the qualification campaign, uh, uh, which we didn't qualify for. Uh, but uh, this is the jersey he wore. Uh, it was Lotto. Uh, this is his last football start as Yugoslavia. After that, we moved to Serbia, Senegora. But he only played 56 times and only scored two goals for Ser uh, Yugoslavia slash Serbia. Um, internationally, uh, Vidic was part of the Serbia Montenegro's famous four defense alongside Kostaic, the enemy, Dragutin uh, Dragutinovic, and Gavrancic that considered just one goal in the 10. Uh, one goal during the 10 2006 qualifying matches, setting a new record for fewest goals conceded. That goal was against Spain as well, away in Spain, uh, and then um, uh, Matea Kejman equalized. Uh, Vidic played a major part in uh, the last qualification game against Bosnia, in which Serbia won 1 0. Uh, he was given a red card uh, five minutes before the end. Obviously, he missed out on the opening stages, uh, and then he had an injury. Uh, he got left knee injury, uh, ligaments during training, and therefore he didn't, he missed the whole uh, World Cup. And it showed we finished 32 out of 32 teams. Terrible. Uh, we lost to Holland 1-0. Right, that's fine. And then we got pumped against Argentina 6-0, which included Messi's first goal in the international sort of setting in tournaments. Uh, at least there's something for us to celebrate. And, and then we lost to Ivory Coast 3-2. After leading 2-1. And it just goes to show that Serbia is just there and then falls through. It's We can play for like 60, 65 minutes before the team collapses. And that's what happened at that World Cup as well. And we're given the group of, group of death. Uh, it's not as... Yeah, what team could qualify through that sort of group? It was always going to be difficult. 
Um, he, he was a regular during the 2010 qualifying campaign and instrumental in Serbia Finnish tops, the uh, likes of uh, France and Romania. That was for the 2010 World Cup, which we did really well. Um, and we all know that he gave away that stupid handball against Germany. Uh, and then luckily Podolski missed and was saved by Stojkovic. But uh, one thing I also want to—I uh, wouldn't—I wouldn't—I wouldn't want to do a video without bringing this up. Uh, and this really pissed me off. Is the way he ended, and a lot of people complained to me uh, were complaining about that when he when he was complaining about who runs serve football, were complaining about the way Vidic ended his international career for Serbia. When we lost to Slovenia one 0 that was his last game. Uh, that was qualifying to for the 2012 Euros. And I just want to show you, this is, he steps up to take a penalty. We're losing 1-0 against Slovenia. He steps up to get, uh, steps up to take a penalty. Listen to the commentator's reaction and let's watch what happens. I don't think that was even a penalty, but whatever. That's Miloš Ninkovic, who legend who plays at Sydney FC. I don't think that's even a pen. Now watch this. Let's listen to this. I've never seen him take a pen for Serbia or Man United uh, or even the Italian teams he played for, Spartak Moscow. I've never seen him take a penalty for them. Zvezda maybe, I don't know. But I'm talking he's never played for, never taken a penalty for those teams. And even, even the commentator's reaction was right there to be said. Now, let's look at this. Now, look at the keeper here. Let's, let's see what the keeper does with his head. You see that? He, he pointed to the left. Now, let's see Vidic is incredibly hard hitted. Watch this. If you're not telling me that wasn't, uh, if that wasn't set up, I'm not here. Let's let's watch that again. Why would you do that? Why would you just go? I mean, look. Let's look at that again. Let's watch it again. Hey, come on. And where does Vidic hit this penalty? To his left, just like the, the keeper indicated with his head. And look at his team effort. The keeper was already leaning to his left before Vidic even hit it. Look, it was even leaning to his left. I mean, it was like Vidic could have seen that and hit it to, look, to his right. That, 100% for me, was a setup. Was a setup. And Vidic is now going to be our president. Look at this. Look, leaning already to his left. He's looking to his left. Look, 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 leaning. He's hit it probably now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I remember. I remember me and my one of my mates were at the Bonnering Sports Club, we were waiting to watch the game, and um, and uh, one of his walk his mates walks in and says, "This game is being looked at by uh, UEFA possible match fixing." Uh, we went to put a bet on, obviously, and the uh, the betting was suspended for that game. So take what that will you will. Uh, was that game set up? I, I think he missed that on purpose. I, I think there's something more to that. Uh, he's always denied it. He said, well, you know, I've taken penalties for Zvezda before. He has. But he's never taken it for United or Serbia. So why now? Um, so he knows that there's accusations that that was match fixing. He knows that. Uh, and that's something he'll need to overcome. But, you know, I, you can see that footage. I'll, I'll link that link. I'll link that video to this video that you're watching now. And then you watch that for yourself. And you tell me. I know I've shown a lot of my mates who aren't Serbs. I go, look, what do you guys reckon about this? And they go, yeah, look, that looks sus to us. That definitely looks like a bit of match fixing. But, um, look, I mean, if that's the best we got at the moment and he wants to make change, good luck for him. Good luck to him. He ended his, camp, his, his career with Serbia really poorly. Uh, let's hope he does better as the Savez president. Um, thanks for watching. As you can see, I've got, I've got a new banner here with this Serbia there. 
um, and this black mesh here, which I'll probably get rid of. I, I know I'm not at an establishment where you pay uh, pay money for goods and services. Uh, it's just, it just I, I didn't think it was going to be this see-through. Uh, but uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have a, a great day. Uh, like and subscribe my channel. Uh, you're going to help me out. Try and build something here. I believe that Serb football needs to be you know, more represented on YouTube and, and in the media in general. You know, Serbian footy does fantastic on Twitter. I want to try and do something like that on YouTube. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.